Our top story, Iran has called on the international community to compel Israel to join the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Iran's deputy ambassador to the UN, Eshaq Ali Habib, said the International Atomic Energy Agency should be allowed to inspect Israel's nuclear facilities. He described Tel Aviv as an obstacle to a Middle East free of nuclear weapons. Iran's envoy also highlighted the U.S. nuclear activity, saying it has conducted more new tests than any other country and has the largest nuclear arsenal. Ali Habib said Washington has no intention of ending its testing and is upgrading its nuclear weapons. He said the U.S., by leaving international treaties like the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, or INF, has dealt a major blow to the nuclear disarmament process. Director of the Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies is uh, Tim Anderson is joining us uh, via Skype out of Sydney. Mr. Anderson, it's good to have you with us. Uh, um, your reflection on this uh, on this piece of news that I just read. It seems to be a worthwhile initiative because there was a proposal at the Higher International Atomic Energy uh, Agency seven years ago in 2013, an initiative of 18 of the Arab states to force Israel, which is a member of the IAEA, to sign the non-proliferation treaty. Now, it was lost fairly narrowly, I think 43 to 51. Of course, the US was lobbying against it and getting other states to join in there. But that proposal, which had been developed over a number of years, um, then lapsed into this more general proposal that everyone liked the sound of but did nothing with, which was the idea of having the, the whole region as a uh, free of weapons of mass destruction. Now, that's gone nowhere too. But since the, the vote was lost narrowly seven years ago, probably there's some, uh, there, there is value in trying to get international support for it at the IAEA. Are you saying that there is a chance actually that this will uh, one day happen, that the IAEA will get to inspect the, 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 the arsenals or the nuclear activities of Israel um, in a larger sense? Well, the first step would be to put pressure on um, the occupying power in Palestine to, um, that, you know, to, to make it seem as a failure that they're not complying with the um, a vote of the IEA as it is. A vote that was fairly narrowly lost seven years ago hasn't been pursued much since then. So if there were further wider international support at the IEA for Israel to be forced to sign on to the um, onto the non-proliferation treaty, there might be some future. And the, one of the problems is that you've got two other states there who are in the same category, um, India and Pakistan. Both of them have nuclear weapons and um, they're in the same situation as Israel, effectively. And uh, but, but do, you, do you look at the the activities that are going on? You see, you have the the Americans who left the INF. You have uh, Israel that uh, is set to be uh, the owner of the largest nuclear arsenal in our region. And of course, uh, you know, the, 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 the hostilities that, that exist in the region, be it for within Israelis and, and the Palestinians and, and of course to the Lebanese border. You know, uh, the fear is that uh, in such a region, the, the existence of not only nuclear activities, but nuclear uh, weapons, is far more dangerous than some of the parts of the world. And just uh, let's not forget that Iran has o its own nuclear activities that for uh, far less dangerous activities, if I may put it that way, you know, it is the subject of regular visits by the IAEA. And yet you have Israel with a with a known nuclear arsenal that that does not allow any any inspections. How does that work to your mind? Well, it's an, it's an example of the arbitrariness, or let's say the partisan nature of uh, international politics and international law, as you say, that the Iran with no nuclear weapons program, but with a significant nuclear industry, is subject to this unilateral pressure because of the fears of some possible future development. And Israel with this actual arsenal is not being brought to the table. But as I said at the beginning, I think there's future in this as a diplomatic initiative to get support from other parts of the world to put the pressure on Israel that um, it is a violator of international law in this respect as well as in all the other respects.
And if it has the like it, it's uh, you know it it has had the support of the of the U.S. Basically, on a lot of things that are going to, to get against them is going to get vetoed by the U.S. in different international arenas, not only at the U.N. Uh, do you really think that uh, the world is really moving in that direction that Israel will be held accountable for yes, at I least yes, for I at do. least the, its the nuclear US activities? Can it's, the U.S. can veto in the Security Council, and it's reached the limits of that, as we've seen with the attempts to snap back the sanctions on Iran. It's failing Definitely. there, and it's uh, in flagrante in front of the rules of the UN Security Council at the moment. But a diplomatic initiative in the International Atomic Energy Agency has some life in it, because the US can vote and organize against it, but they can't veto it there. So that is to say, all of the other countries on Earth that are being subject to these uh, unilateral coercive measures by the US and uh, have got their backs up to it from China to Russia to Latin America and so on, if they join together, yes, there is a possibility of getting this sort of pressure on Israel over its weapons of mass destruction. One last question, and please be brief, Mr. Anderson, before you leave. Like I just said, the U it's the U.S. that has done all uh, the, the most tests uh, uh, nuclear-wise. And, you know, yet uh, it is, uh, to everybody's imagination, it is the least responsible, or it is the, 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 the country with the least responsibility or, or held responsible for what it's done. You know, let's not forget that it's the only country that has actually used uh, nuclear weapons. How does that work uh, for them? Do you really think that, you know, one day they're going to be held accountable for this? Let's not forget that they have actually recently left the INF. Well, for all those reasons, for all those reasons, the fact that the U.S. is so irresponsible, as you pointed out, and it's got away with it, it's been unaccountable for so long, um, it mounts against the U.S. in international diplomatic terms. It is possible to turn the tide in diplomatic terms and hold uh, those that have been unaccountable for so long accountable. All right, let's uh, hope that way, Mr. Tim Anderson. Uh, director for the Center uh, for Counter Hegemonic Studies uh, in Sydney, Australia. I really appreciate your time, Mr. Anderson. Thank you.